at this point we've paid attention to a larger device tablet then we're looking at different mobile devices this is where we're going to get more specific because then the form factor really changes the screen really gets smaller comparatively even if I've got a, an HD size screen here I don't want multiple columns and a lot of um, content in such a small size. So let's start first then with the higher end device. Uh, whatever the way, the way the, how we have to think about this is we've defined a variety of starting points at the top. Then it's all about redefining what is necessary below. We've already defined a size for a wrapper that I think will still work for the, the lower devices, like the font size or background colors and such. So I don't need to specify every single CSS selector that I already wrote. I basically just have to specify a selector I want to redefine for this lower level. So I'm going to start with the wrapper. The wrapper at this point, when we're on a smaller size, I want to set its width to 98%. So here it's going to take up even more of the, of the size of the screen. Uh, the, the wrapper, remember, is the white part. Behind the scenes, it's the body. And then the wrapper is on top, the white background. So this wrapper, I already defined it at the top, wrapper. I don't need to specify the background color again. It, it keeps it white. I don't need to re-specify the margin. It keeps it 1, M, top and bottom, and auto left and right. I don't need to re-specify the border. It kept the border. What I'm redefining, re-specifying is the width. Now it's ignoring 960 and going for 98%. And that's why this is in this order. Set your basics at the top and redefine them lower down. Next rule, section dot blog. <clears throat> so at the top we had section dot blog. I've skipped talking about uh, a few of these items at the moment, you know, the unordered lists and, and the footers perhaps and such at the moment. And I'm going to the blog, the main section, the blog. Open close curly braces. So we have then valid selectors for tags, classes, or IDs inside of this media query that will only apply for these sizes. Clear both. We had um, float left originally, and that was that's what was causing the left and the right <coughs> columns. I don't want that perhaps anymore at this smaller size. Clear both can sort of nullify that. So we'll say opposite of float left. The width of that will be moved up to 98%. So the section itself, which was two columns, and we had it at 70%. Now we're saying no longer two columns, but make sure let's stretch out that single column to 98%. That means border dash right none. If I don't specify something, it will keep what's already there border dash right one pixel solid steel blue that's when I had a left and a right if I don't say anything about a border right here it'll keep that border to the right I have to then do the opposite oftentimes when I put a value I either have to put a zero or in this case, I have to put none, no border to the right anymore. I 
had some padding to the right originally that I now need to change because there's no more right column. Zero. So this removes order from line whatever. Go up and look on what whatever line that is up there. And then padding right removes the line. It removes that padding. that uh, article section so line 75 and 76 so sometimes we need to rewrite what exists sometimes we need to do the opposite Sometimes we need to nullify it in a couple of ways. How do you know when to do which and when? You, you really have to look up a particular property and see what are the values. And it takes practice. After section, we'll target article figure. Originally, our figure had a certain border with a certain roundness with a certain size. I want to still keep the border. I want to keep the, the roundness of the border. I want to keep various aspects of the figure. But what I really want to change is the size of the figure. Increase that up to 480 pixels. I want to use more of the size of that mobile screen for the picture. Just to confirm here, I'm making a big mistake here. Hopefully you're not as well. I'm writing this on the max width. Sorry, we're supposed to be writing this on the next one up here. So be careful here. The higher end mobile. Yes, sorry about that. All of this that we wrote here is supposed to be up on the higher end mobile. You can select it and you can drag and drop. You can drag and drop your code in Notepad. I just realized that all of this that we just wrote should be in the higher end mobile. You can just select it and drag it, and drop it. So that's what we want. Wrapper, section, blog, and article figure should have been on higher end mobile size. Sorry, we will do the lowest end one a little later. So your lower, your lower end mobile should be empty for the moment. All of this is in the higher end mobile. Okay, continuing article after article figure, let's deal with the aside, the other side column. Sidebar, clear both. It's no longer trying to float. It's no longer trying to be left and right. So clearing it will keep it on its own line. The width of this, 97%. 98 might also work like I had up here for blog. But that also has to do with various... Uh, Paddings and other things that eat up the pieces, the space. Speaking of which, padding is next. Zero space zero space zero one M. So on the four sides of the box, which side of the box did we add some padding to? The left. The left, yes. So I nullified top, right, bottom, and added one to the left. And the sidebar content, 
text align center. It's no longer a sidebar. It's going to appear below the main section blog. And I think it looks nice to center that text. Instead of it leaning to the left side, it'll be empty to the right. I'm going to center the text in the, in the sidebar, which is now below. After that aside, we'll specify aside section A. We have links. We had links on that sidebar that we now need to rewrite. Border-bottom. Let's do 2px dashed midnight blue. So I had a simple little single pixel line below each of those sidebar links. Now I'm making them <coughs> two pixels and dashed. This is just for aesthetics. I could change colors and other things too. But now that I'm getting onto a, a, a mobile device of this size, I'm making it look a little different. <coughs> After section A, it's a side section A hover. Let's deal with when we hover. At the moment, the project is getting mobile-friendly, but it's still targeting as if a person visited my website on a mobile device. Um, hover could be then, what does it look like when you uh, put your mouse over it? We'll add border-right, five pixels, solid brown. We had defined above border left with a brown edge. That's still going to stay. Now I've said here border right a brown edge. So it'll have a left and a right bit of color flourish. Whatever code previously existed outside of a media query will apply always. Whatever's in a media query then will either overwrite what exists or add new to it. One more item here, aside h2. Any headings in the h2, padding, 0.5m at the top, and then zeros for the rest, no extra space. So tighten up that space at the top of your heading twos in the aside. When we get to long chunks of code, we're going to lose track of what these closing curly braces are, especially JavaScript. It's not too long here, but I'm going to make a note here. This is the end of my media query of the higher end mobile device. The way I would do that is comment end, and maybe I'll just uh, say higher end mobile size. Whatever makes sense for me. So when I see my code at a, at a glance, and I'm in this spot here, line 207, where is that curly brace coming from? Oh, that's the end of my higher end mobile size. We didn't do it for the other two media queries because they were small. They were like five lines of code. Here, I'm building it up. And when we do the, the smallest size, that's going to be a lot more code, so it's more useful to add the comments. <coughs> At this point, I think we can save it and, and run it and, and resize our screen a bit. I would say rather than going into responsive mode, just resize your web browser screen to see it jump into those um, media query breakpoints. When you squeeze it down to a certain size, it should then the screen should expand, it should become one column, 
your rollover should behave a little differently, all of that should apply because then the media query of this size kicks in. The web browser sees it and applies it. Let's see how mine is looking. So remember to run your HTML. I am at the big size, scroll down a little bit, it jumped down to the tablet size, squish it down a little bit more, at a certain point it jumps to that point. There is a little bit of no man's land at a certain point that it's looking weird. That's normal. And then it's at a certain smaller size like that, and what happened was the picture's bigger, the sidebar should have gotten moved down, centered, rollovers are a little different, notice left and right color and the dashed lines, centered text, too much space which I can tighten up further. That's what should happen at that point. Bring it back to a next level higher up. You know, play with those sizes. That font isn't that great for that size, but I'll play with that later. Now my maximum size, that goes to 75% of the screen. Looks good. A certain point right here. So let's pause at this point, hopefully get it down to some kind of size like that. Run it in Chrome and try the try the various uh, responsive sizes. Resize your screen and you'll see different sizes also. Let's pause right there. So, anyone need a little help?
Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay.
So we're seeing here there could be a lot of little details that could easily go astray. Um, semicolons, remember, always end every line at a semicolon. Mind your closing parentheses. It's, like I said, it's very easy to lose track of these. And it almost looks like here this is, this is closed. But this is only closing the aside here, not the main, not the main block. So one way to troubleshoot this that I do quickly is to click an ending curly brace and follow it to make sure the opening is where I expect it. If it suddenly is not there, that could be an issue. If the color of some of these elements is not quite right, that's, a, that's something to stand out as well. All of my code here is perfect, right? No. Why is that text black, and that's lilac, and that's lilac, and that's lilac? Would you miss a semicolon at the end of the Good eye. Semicolon is missing there. So the color coding is not just there for aesthetics. It's there to kind of guide you. So as I scan my code quickly, why is that code black and everything else is lilac? Oh, I'm missing right above it a semicolon. So get used to looking at it that way, too. If I misspelled a line, if I put an extra G, I, it would also be the wrong color. Now, what might also be easy to troubleshoot is this. Is that easier to troubleshoot? Maybe the text a little larger. Uh, try this on your keyboard. Control plus control minus. Sometimes it's literally getting a different perspective on things. Maybe just making it bigger or smaller or just having it larger all the time could be helpful. That's going to view, zoom. So view, zoom, zoom in, and reset. You can also use the number pad or the scroll wheel. So on the mouse, I can hold control, and then on the mouse, scroll up, scroll down. That zooms in, zoom out, zooms out. Sometimes it is easier to, to go big so you can see the details. I'll put it back to normal. The the next part um, we need to deal with the final uh, smallest size of device. Let's go to the lower end mobile. Let's go to lower end mobile and let's start to refine some code here. First, we'll start with the wrapper. And again here, before I get too much further, I could mix up these curly braces. I'm going to put a note, a comment on that curly brace, which ends the lower end right away so I don't lose track of it. And For the wrapper, I now want to stretch out. I want to stretch it out all the way so that it fits completely there with 100%. There was some margin getting in my way. 
which I will now say margin zero. No margin anymore around that. There's no extra space. And then I want no more border. None. The border that I had all, all this time looked nice when I had those different sizes. But now it's just taking up valuable pixels at the smaller size. So border none. Depending on our various fonts. So you're going to need to tweak this yourself. We need to now change the height of the header. Depending on the font, your sizes will be exactly what I say here or slightly different. So next line, header. Let's see, just to confirm at the top. Yeah, we called it header. Okay, so we're saying header here. Height, 11.25. Let's do this. If you're in the two-column view, select your, your second tab and right-click Move to Other View. I want just one column for the moment. For the moment, I also don't want to work with the HTML. Close your HTML file. I only want to focus on CSS. And what I'm trying to do here is redefine lines of code from above that exist down here. Well, I'm 200 lines down. And it's annoying to go back up to the top to check the code and come back down. Let's do this. You should have one file open. Right-click, clone to other view. That keeps your current CSS file open, and now you've got two views. On the left column will be my code at the top, and on the right column, the code at the bottom. Left column is at, up at line one, Right column is down on two hundredths. It's the same file. Be careful here. This helps me. It may not help you. With practice, you'll see if you like it or not. I'm looking at one file in two locations. And to me, because I think, and I grew up reading left to right, I think this is the top, that's the bottom. Start and end, left to right, works for me. Because I want to see some line of code up here that I want to redefine lower. And it's much better than going up and down, up and down, losing my place. I started with wrapper at the beginning. I redefined it a bit at the bottom. We had header. I redefined it here. This also shows you we never touch the background. That's fine. It still gets inherited all the way down if you don't mention it. <coughs> you want to right-click the... the um, your current tab and select move, uh, clone to other view. If you have more than one column already, first put into move to other view to do one view, and then right click clone to other view. So my left column will be at the top, my right at the bottom. Be careful here. This code is going to start to look the same. But for me, left top, right bottom. I need to redefine a little bit next of the header H1. If I scroll down a bit to look at it, this is the code that governs it at the top. I need to change a little bit down here. One way that this could also be useful is I can copy the existing code paste it below into the media query and change it. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it's, it's a hindrance. In my case, uh, I'm not going to copy it, but that's a way that you could possibly do it. You can copy that code and then change it as necessary at the bottom. I'll write it manually. Header, space h1, height, One M, margin bottom, 
0.75m, padding top, 0.25m, and font size, 1.5m. These values are values I'm giving you based on my experimentation to make it look good. Those values are also based on the fonts that I was playing with, uh, you know, a month ago when I set up this activity. I've decided today to do different fonts. I had a font called Lobster. These sizes were perfect for the Lobster font. I haven't checked if these sizes here now are too big or too small for my Audio Wick font, <coughs> Audio Wide, whatever it's called. So this is a perfect opportunity, however, because if you chose different fonts, a height of 11.5 may be wrong. A font size of 1.5 may be too small. So we're going to get the practice again of using the element inspector to figure out the perfect dimensions for yourself. The way we do this is save it, run it in the browser, and then resize your screen. We're now to the lowest levels. If you resize it down, you're going to start seeing the, the smaller sizes. The way that, you're, that you know that it's working is if you resize your browser far enough down, the border should disappear completely. I'm resized far enough down, the border is gone. Yes, my columns are still working because I haven't redefined that. But you should be, you should have no more border. When you're up a little bit higher, you'll see a border. No more border. Basically, all the stars disappear because we also said padding zero. No more, no more ma margin or padding anywhere, everywhere. I don't need the star field anymore. I need to focus on my main content. I had for that top header height 11.5, which goes all the way down here. That's okay because we're going to make those four buttons stacked on top of each other now. We had them wide in line, which worked on a bigger device. Now that might not work. I want them stacked. So I'm building some space there, some empty space to have home, and then below it heroes, and before it, below it villains, and before it about. So that empty space there is fine. What I'm saying is that maybe the header here, h1, maybe because of your font, maybe now your particular font doesn't look so good, so you need to figure out these sizes of h1. The way to do that is to have your right-click inspect element. in your developer's tool, and you have the particular element selected, the heading one, heading one, header h1, in my style sheet file line 219, because of my media query, it says this. This I can play with and say, well, what if I want two m's, if I need more space on the text? What if the actual font size itself Instead of 1.5, a 2.5 is better. So this element inspector is going to be much more valuable as time goes on to figure out the exact sizes and colors and things without having to edit the code in Notepad, save it, whoops, I ran the CSS file, without having to go back and forth. You can make your changes here. They're not permanent until you save them actually in Notepad. They go away if you refresh. We need to start then to make the nav bar behave in a stacked fashion. So after header h1, nav, height 
height 8.25. that's pulling down the background color behind the nav bar. At 8.25, I've now covered it in blue so that it's not showing the original graphic. And then I'm going to have them, all of those links on their own line. So if you have decided that your header, in your case, looks best at 15M, You'll probably have to tweak your nav height here to correspond to some value. Let's say I had five links. Uh, home, heroes, villains, contact, and about. I have five things. Well, that means I need more space. My header then would need to increase in height and also the nav. Nav UL. These bullet points. Margin. 0, padding 0. Whatever I had previously defined now doesn't work because I've got a smaller screen. <coughs> Next nav list item, display block. This one is the opposite that we had previously of display inline. We had bullet points that were taking one line each. Up at the code somewhere, we had set it. We had set it to display in line, so we had a horizontal <coughs> nav bar. Now we need to take it back to block level. Each one takes up its own space. I want to take a quick look at that. It's starting to look like this. Those are. <coughs> getting their own line. These hovers are still working as tabs, which don't make sense. And I still have now a right side border. Yes. Somewhere else, we had defined a text align center. <coughs> yes, exactly. Somewhere, text align center, right here. The original definition, you know, there's a text align higher at the top. Oh, here it is, nav. At the top, we had to text align center, so it's going to keep it unless we say text align left. So that is inherited. So display block and then border dash right, we need to get rid of it. None. It doesn't make sense on the right anymore. Instead, I want it at the bottom. Two pixel dashed midnight blue. We have the border right to the right. Now we have the border bottom to the bottom. Two pixels dashed. line height. I want to separate those bullet, those uh, nav links to M. Padding left to zero, padding right to zero. I had padding left and rights and all of that set up previously. Now I want to only deal with the left and the right.
So I'm still getting those rollover tabs. That's fine. I'm, I'll fix that in a moment. Now I'm getting the dash line between them. A little bit of space. This this overlap here, we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. But I would like... If I get a good effect here of the dash line on this unit, and this one, and that one. But I don't have a dash line at the top of the first one. We had border, bottom, and it created the effect of having the dash line below each element. But it doesn't work on the first element because I want to set the border top to the first element. So if I were to set border bottom and border top, I'd get a double line on most of them. I only want a border top on the first item. So we can do this. We can add, after nav list item, nav list item first dash child. There is a list of, there's a collection of list items. The first one, the first child, the first element of this nav bar, only target the first link. Border, top, midnight blue. We have first child, we have last child. We have nth child, which lets us skip even and odd. We have a way to alternate which one are we selecting from a list. This really works best on a list of elements, like in cells in a table that are sequential. In this particular point, we've got navbar links in an order. All that this is for now, here's before. Here's after. I put a dotted line at the top only of the first list item. That might be a good note. Targets only the first list item of bullet points. The nav is one of the ones we most extensively have to rewrite because it just doesn't work the same on a mobile device. So continuing, nav list item link. Display block to make sure that it's on its own line. Padding zero top and bottom and 0.25 left and right. And then the hover. Nav list item A hover. We started to add roundness to the top corners of the, of the nav bar. We don't want roundness anymore. We want it to be flat, so we have to add the opposite. Border dash top dash left dash radius zero. Not none, because none is for items like the border. Uh, this is the roundness of it. It takes a value. And then we've got border dash top dash right, radius zero. We don't need that drop shadow anymore. We don't need that three dimensionality anymore of, of, a, of the tab effect. So box shadow, in this case, none. Not zero, but none, because we had, when we had box shadow, we had X and Y and blur and color. So we put none. So none of those take effect. We also 
had done this so that remember the link that's on should <coughs> always be highlighted. Let's back up. This this rule is targeting, this selector is targeting whenever you hover. If you look back up on back above, right on my left side here, we also had it set up so that whenever there is the on link, do the do the same. That might be a spot for copy and paste. Comma. Etc. Question. What's that? <coughs> or radius. Thank you. So comma nav list item a dot on the class. When you have an element automatically on to show you your in that screen, that should be should be on. Let's see what that looks like. So if I refresh that, you get these hovers, so these rollovers, they're no longer tabs, they hover over like that. Get the dashes. A way to fix this in my case, I've got some empty space there. That might mean I need to tweak some of these some of these heights. The way I may figure this out is In the web browser, I can uh, inspect it. And then I can look at the developer's tools here. Header is 11.25. Maybe it'll work as 12. Whatever size um, for you. If I went to 9.25, now it goes too far. So here I'm trying to figure it out. In the browser, In the browser, I'm trying to figure it out instead of changing it, saving it, running it, changing it, saving it, running it. I can check in the browser. In my case, it looks like an 8.6 would work. Because of my particular font and other things. So a nav of 8.6 might be better. So here as I resize my web browser, my various breakpoints are taking into effect. Still have a way to go, of course. We'll do a break in a moment. 
I need to deal with the columns, but I've been working on that. So this isn't behaving yet. I, I never refined that. The smallest size is the one that's going to have the most redefinition because it's so small. We'll pause here for a break. Uh, I won't lock the door this time. And uh, it's about 8.40. We'll be back at 8.50. And we'll continue.